How you doing? I'm Louie Gamino with Enviroscape LA. We're here in Southern California, actually in the city of Torrance, and a client of ours called us out. We did a, a full-blown landscape here, pondless waterfall in the back, a lot of new plantings. The client is also very conscious of the drought we have in here in Southern California. So we switched out all that old spray heads and we converted over to drip irrigation. Part of doing that drip irrigation not only is doing the planters, but as well as this parkway strip here of a fescue lawn. So how do you irrigate a fescue lawn responsibly with uh, city water? Well, no doubt you want to minimize runoff, you want to minimize overspray. So we're installing drip irrigation here in the parkway, subsurface drip irrigation. Uh, for this particular parkway, it is about four feet by 22, 23 feet. So knowing that, I'm gonna we're gonna run our lateral lines to drip irrigation. I'll tell you the formula for it every 12 inches. So I'm gonna do five rows. Now you notice five rows instead of four, where it's only four feet across, but you have to count that zero, because you gotta start somewhere. So that's important when you're uh, strategizing and you're getting all your calculations for your, uh, for your materials work. So we're gonna run five rows, uh, 12 inch spacing. Of course, the length of it, which we said is a little bit over 20 feet. So I know from the get-go that we're using 100 linear feet of 0.6 Rainbird Copper Shield uh, tubing that's gonna be putting out 0.6 gallons per hour. In order to do that, the old-fashioned way, well, there was a pick and a shovel. We're so modern nowadays, and maybe we're a bit spoiled as well. We now have our trencher, where it's going to sink our drip tubing down approximately four inches overall. So go ahead and keep watching the video. We're going to start it up, and we're going to run this very first line.
too long. Uh, if you notice the gentleman behind me, what they're doing is they're installing the staples that hold the drip tubing in place until it's time to backfill. So those are uh, iron galvanized staples that they're using there, and that holds down our Rainbird Copper Shield Technology drip tubing. Now, part of the, uh, the drip process, if you notice it, is having all your calculations correct. Right there we were at about eh, four and a half feet, so we actually installed a total of six lines instead of five. It's better to keep your, your uh, spacing tight rather than too far away. Uh, of course, we depend on the capillary action of the soil to water to move side to side. And so we're going ahead and installed an extra one there. So while they're hooking up the fittings, we could talk real briefly <coughs> about the components that are involved in doing a drift system, a properly designed and installed drift system. Uh, if you notice, you take a look here at our valve. It's a rainbow valve, three-quarter inch anti-siphon. <laughs> this little guy right here, that's our filter. Now, not only is that a filter, but it's also a pressure regulator as well. If you notice, that one is there set to 30 PSI. It's very crucial to uh, properly size all your filters. Uh, for instance, that particular filter, I know that I could run anywhere from 0.2 gallons per minute up to five gallons per minute, which with the tubing we're using would equal about 500 linear feet would be the max on that. Uh, the next size filter gets up to 15 gallons per minute, which uh, in our bigger applications would then install uh, a lot more tubing as well, which would then equal about 1,500 linear feet or 0.6 gallons per hour. Those are just some crazy numbers out there that I always got to keep going in my head so that we can always install the job the right way. Another crucial part to installing the drip system, if you notice over here, we have two valve boxes. This one here, that contains our ARV, which is an air relief valve. That's a very important part of your drip system, very important part. That allows air to freely enter the zone when it's shut off. It also helps prevent a back siphoning so it doesn't suck debris in when it very first opens up. The second guy over here, we tried to keep them covered with mulch so they don't quite stick out as much. But this is a simple clean out. You notice a little fitting on here, it's a valve. When it's time to go ahead and clean out your drip system, uh, probably about once a year in residential applications, or anytime there's a repair, you want to make sure to flush out your system to get out any debris that may have entered the system. Keep all the emitters nice and clean. So the boys there hooking up our uh, fittings that are down here, down below. And they're going to start putting those in very soon. All these fittings are a 17 millimeter uh, fitting. They're just a push fitting. Doesn't need uh, a hose clamp or glue or anything like that. I know because we're running uh, roughly about 120 linear feet of this that we do not need to use a bigger sized uh, header, like a PVC subheader they call it, uh, three quarter inch pipe. We could use uh, just our simple poly pipe, which is a copper shield, half inch tubing and we will have enough pressure for the system to operate successfully. So the boys are getting together here. It's quite a process. So this is our job. Uh, this is Louis Gamino with Enviroscape LA installing another subsurface drip irrigation system. So when you think sustainability, think in Viroscape, LA.